indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thanks everyone. And we'll do a quick roll call. So if you're here name, just say I or here, whatever you want to do. Justice for all. All right, thanks everyone. And we'll do a quick roll call. So if you're here today, just say aye or here, whatever you want to do. That's just for all. I'm hearing myself right now, but I'm going to delay, I think. So, Commissioner Dewar? Here. Commissioner Oxford? Aye. Commissioner Holt? Present. Commissioner Jennifer Davis? Here. Commissioner Connor Davis? Here. And Commissioner Cronin? Here. All right. All right. So we, everybody's here for the record. And I will take a moment of uh, chair's uh, ability here and introduce our new commissioner, Commissioner Connor Davis, not to be confused with our other Commissioner Davis. They look a lot alike. Um, <laughs> so um, Connor comes from us from a very, a very stringent, very competitive group of people that we interviewed. Um, it was myself, uh, Council President Ewing, and Council Member um, Daughtry did the interviews. And it was a very, I was, we were surprised, pleasantly surprised at how good all the candidates were. And so it was really great. And I'm glad um, we got a very good candidate here. So I'm going to give a moment for uh, the new Commissioner Davis to briefly introduce himself to everyone, give us his little elevator speech before we get the meeting started, if no one has a problem with that. Yeah, well, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to, to join the, uh, the Planning Commission. A uh, little bit about myself. Uh, out of, uh, my, my wife and I live here in Northeast Lake Stevens. We have our, our two boys, Anthony and Nathaniel. Uh, they're seven and nine. They go to Mount Pelchuck Elementary, and that's where my wife teaches fifth grade. Um, I teach just a few blocks away at North Lake Middle School. Uh, I teach sixth and seventh grade social studies. Uh, I made a transition to teaching four years ago when we moved here to Lake Stevens from Florida. Uh, in Florida, and uh, where I grew up in the greater Tampa Bay area, St. Petersburg, uh, for 30 years. Uh, at, uh, I, I worked in a variety, uh, but mainly hospital and, or, uh, and uh, higher ed admin. Uh, before that, I spent six years working in uh, local and then eventually national politics. Uh, it's everything from getting involved in a city council race. Uh, the, my, my dad was the economic and uh, uh, planning or um, economic and planning and economic development director for the city of St. Pete. Uh, and I was really involved with uh, local interact group and it kind of dovetailed into me working through him to work for a city council member when I was in high school. That continued through college and I worked in at the statewide level uh, for uh, people on both sides of the aisle back when that was uh, appropriate. Nowadays, nobody does that anymore. Uh, and then I worked, started working for a uh, a young senator from the state of Illinois who wound up running for president. And uh, that was a life-changing opportunity for me. Uh, but my wife said, no more politics. Uh, it was something that was not tenable. Uh, ha having a, you know, wanting to start a young family, uh, at which point I, uh, I had a passion for affordable housing. That's a lot of the policy that I worked on. Uh, and uh, so I worked for Habitat for Humanity. Uh, it's where I got my community service hours in high school um, and uh, I've worked for Habitat for a number of years before making the transition to St. Petersburg College. Uh, I worked in administration before making the move here to the Pacific Northwest. Um, always had a passion to, for teaching, would take, you know, uh, always wanted to. My wife is a big cheerleader for me to, uh, to start teaching and here we are. And I'm thrilled to join the uh, the planning commission and really appreciate the uh, the time that uh, uh, Commissioner Welch and the city council members provided me to uh, come in and talk about the possibility and I appreciate y'all for uh, for having me. 
Well, thank you so much. We're glad you joined us. Um, I think you're gonna be an amazing asset to this commission. That's already stock full of, um, minus myself, some really good people. So um, welcome aboard and uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you. All right, we'll get started with our agendas and we'll go with the action items. Um, action items are gonna be approval of our minutes from the February 16th meeting. Hope everybody's had a chance to review those minutes and is there any, <clears throat> excuse me, changes that anybody would like to see? Hearing nothing, I get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. So moved. I'll second them. All right, I got a motion and a second to approve the minutes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, unanimous. All right. Sorry for the delay, I'm having trouble with my screens right now. Yeah. I have five, so I get lost. Um, so we'll open up to guest business at this time. At this time, we're gonna open up for anyone in the community that wishes to address the commission. This is on any subject except for any, the public hearing. So if there's anything else other than our public hearing today that you wish to address the commission on, now is the time. Please just uh, um, say something. If you're on video, raise your hand or something. But if you're on audio, just say your name and we'll, uh, or say something and we'll uh, get you your time on the front of the council or the commission. Excuse me. Do we have anybody? I thought there'd be some. All right. Uh, Jeannie, do you see everybody? Not either. All right. With that, we're going to close the uh, guest or guest business portion and we'll move on to our discussion item. And today's discussion item is going to be on the short term code amendment. At that time, I'll turn it over to uh, Planner Needham. Um, today we are back with our first draft of the short-term rental code that uh, staff and I have been working on. So for anyone just joining us, um, we have held two previous briefings, both in December and February, where the planning, planning commission got the opportunity to really provide some input to staff. So our current tourism regulations came into effect in 1998, so it's been a while since they've been updated and um, it's very relevant um, with Airbnb and VRBOs um, in, in increasing popularity. So we've researched some of the code amendments um, from nearby lake front communities such as Kirkland, um, Seattle, Sammamish, Issaquah, and Mercer Island, and those are included in the table for you. So based on feedback that we received from commissioners and articles from MRSC, we have included the um, the following items in the draft. Um, so we are limiting it to owner occupied residences. Um, and then it, the current code draft prohibits unhosted rentals. Um, it does establish a maximum of two rental agreements per home and two guests per bedroom. Um, and it does require one additional parking space for every room that is rented out. Um, it's also important to note, we have received four public comments to date, um, three of which have been included in the packet with the exception of most recent one, um, all this to be in your email. Um, today, we are asking for some feedback on the permit process. Um, so should the commissioners wish to allow the unhosted rentals, staff recommends requiring an ACUP for that. That's just to ensure that public notice is given. Um, and then also, should additional traffic mitigation fees be applied for the change of use? So um, I'll give an opportunity for Dave and Russ to add anything if they wish, and then we'll turn it over to Planning Commission. I, yeah, I didn't have a whole lot to add. I think Jill kind of hit the, hit the major points. Um, just that we had incorporated some additional language that we had seen. We had had a request directly from uh, the city council to look at a couple additional communities. That was something that we had previously heard from the planning commission as well. So we thought that that was definitely worthwhile to do some additional research and factored into the additional time that we took before bringing this back to you. Um, 
you know, we the feedback that we received, while it's only four public comments, it was pretty uniform in the request that uh, short-term rentals not be expanded to allow for unhosted rentals. And so that's been incorporated in as well as some of the feedback that we had heard from commissioners at previous meetings, um, as far as the first draft of the code does not have that unhosted rental component, as Jill just mentioned. Um, if the commission does want to explore that opportunity, we think it should be a more stringent, um, a more involved public input process. So um, those were the major highlights that I had. Um, I don't know if Russ had anything additional, but we're really just looking for your initial feedback. This will be the first time that you're looking at the draft code and uh, we'd love to hear everything you have to say. I'll just add a, a couple of uh, comments quickly. So thanks to both um, staff for working on this, really appreciate where we're at, the work that um, Jill and Dave have done. What we really tried to do was capture the, the flavor of the Planning Commission's meeting where you wanted pretty straightforward regulations that found that um, balance between uh, property rights and the, the rights of neighborhoods to make sure that they can continue to function as neighborhoods. Um, also, as requested and mentioned, we looked at a lot, a lot of code, broad codes, specifically at codes with other lakeside communities, as well as doing some national research through publications through the Municipal Research Service Center. And that's where the baseline of the recommendations come tonight. So very curious to hear from the commission, their thoughts, and then uh, moving this on to public hearing. Thank you, uh, Planner Needham, uh, Dave, and uh, Russ. It's, uh, this has been a lot of great work, and I am agree with uh, Russ that hopefully we can get it far enough along where we can go to a public hearing after this. So hopefully we can move this, this uh, ordinance along tonight. So this is our discussion time, commissioners. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to read all the documents. I know it's quite a bit of stuff to go over. And how do we feel about it? How do everybody want to do with this ordinance it changes? And I'm going to go with Commissioner Huxford. I see your hand up. Thank you so much. And I appreciate um, Commissioner Davis, you joining us. I have a problem with old and new Commissioner Davises, so we'll need to get <laughs> over that. I don't want to call Jennifer old at any given day because I know that she knows where I live. So <laughs> um, I went through this and I'm so impressed that what we said was being uh, gleaned, but also what was being sent in by our community. Um, it impresses me when I look at who wrote where they live and uh, not that we want to make this a waterfront only issue, but it seems to me that these are issues that are going to affect our waterfront more than others. So let's keep that in, in mind when we're doing this. Um, it comes down to who are the stewards of the lake. And if we have somebody that is buying a home to only make this their business, they're buying a home on the lake to make this their full-time business, we are ousting perhaps someone that might be a steward of the lake, someone that might help sponsor Aquafest or a sports team or purple and gold or whatever, um, because that has now become a business on our lakefront. So um, I love everything that we're doing. I think that it's really indicative of the time and also um, keeping in mind that we are a, while we're not a destination tourist place, we are a community around a lake. Um, my only question would be who will enforce this? <clears throat> In the Odegaard letter, they talked about um, compliance enforcing this. And you, in the manual as well, they talked about how you can't um, uh, rule on something, make a, a regulation on something that you can't enforce. And I want to make sure that it's clearly stated how the process is that if this is being implemented, you will be, you know, that, that this is the process that will be watching you. And if you are someone next door to someone who is running around, evidently a fire pit in the middle of the night naked, uh, who you would call and who would respond there. So that would be my only addition. Otherwise, I'm very complimentary of the work that has been done since we last spoke of this. Thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Davis with the hand up. Um, I want to just echo what Commissioner Huxford said about the work that the staff did. I thought this was so fantastic to have 
the best practices document included that sort of address different um, scenarios that that the, this type of activity can occur under. And then having that really comprehensive survey of similar um, jurisdictions was super helpful. Um, and I feel like the code is really reflective of what we discussed uh, the last time this came in front of us in terms of having a hosted environment and um, addressing parking. And I just, I, I, I like it. I think it's ready to move forward for public uh, hearing. Thank you. Anyone else? I think Commissioner Doerr had his hand up. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, no, I, I'd like to also uh, compliment the team on all the work they've done and all the uh, research that they've done for the for the commission. Um, uh, you know, I think we have a much clearer picture now of where we're heading with this. Um, one thing, and I, and I think this would probably fall outside the purview of the of the commission, but uh, one area of concern that I had is as we went into this, we really didn't know. Uh, how many of these uh, of these uh, short-term rental type properties existed within Lake Stevens. And a lot of the research was done just based on a uh, survey of VRBO and some other websites. So I would hope that uh, as, as this reaches its, its culmination, we're able to get to a point where we have a system to identify um, where the short-term rentals are so that if there is an issue with one of them, uh, we know, or the city knows, some code enforcement or law enforcement or whoever knows, uh, you know, what they're dealing with as they get the complaint, where the complaint goes, how that's shunted and how that's dealt with. Um, I think the only other question that I had based on, um, on, uh, on the materials that were provided was in uh, section 1408.010, where we define short-term rental. And it, it does specifically say that it's an owner-occupied uh, uh, residents, but I wonder if it might also be helpful to specifically say what it's not, uh, and that a short-term rental is not a unoccupied rental site, um, because we do mention in here that Airbnb and VRBO uh, may be something that is considered a, a short-term rental. So just a just a clarification of definition, I think, would be my only thought there. Okay. You know, the commissioners have anything off the top of their heads they wish to discuss about this. And Commissioner Cronin. Yeah, I'll keep mine short. I, I echo all the uh, sentiments of the other commissioners and also the concern of uh, Commissioner Huxford regarding, you know, that did cross my mind in terms of <clears throat> who is going to enforce a lot of this. But regardless of that, I think it's important for the city to get up to date, you know, and get their code um, updated. Um, and secondly, I just, as a lot of the, uh, some of the materials suggested, um, I think simpler is better with regulation uh, uh, such as this. And I commend the city for how simple, simply it was written and uh, how easy it flowed. And, you know, I look forward to pushing it forward. Thank you. Chair Welch, if I may. Yes, um, um, I had one more note that I didn't make up and I um, greatly appreciate the other um, commissioners, but not only parking, but trailer parking. So if we are looking at parking regulation, we need to looking at parking plus one. Um, you know, if you're inviting two people, but they're both bringing a boat, that's four parking spaces. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other commissioners have any input at this moment as we move forward here? All right, then I guess I'll, uh, uh, my comments are gonna be a little bit more Long, long winded, I think. And um, I guess I, I like the ordinance overall. I like everything we've been doing so far. I am not a, I am not a fan of the required owner occupied. I'm, I don't think that should be a requirement, but I might be in the, I don't think I'm going to be a majority on that thinking, but that's my opinion. I also, um, maybe I missed it in the ordinance, maybe something about if there's ADUs, allowed to be used, um, whether ADU or DDU. Okay, so that would include, that would constitute an occupied property. Owner. Okay, thank you. Uh, we might need to maybe put something there that marks that that it is something like, you know, to make it simpler, everybody understands what that is. Uh, the other things, see, go through my notes here. Um,
I guess the um, on the 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 business license and stuff. I I don't know what we're requesting on a business license on how that would be done, and I'm also going to agree with the enforcement. Um, how like we already have several. I'm going to guess at least twenty plus unoccupied already working in these in the city. Are they grandfathered in as because they already got businesses that are running now, or do they have to confer to this ordinance as it stands today? That, um, that would be a concern since there's already at least 20 to 25 running. Um, how do they fit into this current ordinance? If they already, let's say they're not owner occupied and we just, and the city council says owner occupied, are they all of a sudden out of business and we just put somebody out of business out of the clear blue? Um, so I would wonder how we fit the current places in. And since there is no list of current places, how we figure out who was already running and who wasn't as we get the ordinance going, since no one's had to register that the, the homes yet. Because I know when you when you go to the websites to rent a place, you don't get the address until you rent it. So we just know they're in an area. We don't know the exact address of each of these homes right now because of the way it's run. And I would like to have a list. No matter how we go with owner occupied or a business license, we should know, and I think neighbors should know that their the place next door is only a temporary rented place i i like all that quite well so my my only problem with the ordinance is the owner occupied i, I have an issue with that one and then enforcement when it comes to a business license and things like that how we're going to enforce that moving forward would be my concern right now i don't know if staff can help me out with the the grandfathered in one or how we're going to deal with the current ones or not yeah. sure Go ahead, Jill. So just to clarify, um, the current unoccupied properties are not allowed per the code. So they would be enforced just like any other. Okay. And just to clarify, we do have, obviously we have our tourist home regulations right now within the same section that this would replace. So I think there are just a few that have gone through that process to get the required ACUP that's in the current that's in the current code, um, just one. Is that what you're saying, Jenny? Okay, well then just one. That makes it pretty easy to know which one is subject to the current regulations. May I ask a question? If it, and this is per laying off of um, Chair um, Welch's comments, but how am I notified if someone within half mile, quarter mile, 100 feet, whatever, is applying for a license to be able to do this? As a, as a business, uh, well, as a business owner, if I'm to do something in like Stevens, I have to make everybody in the planet know that I'm going to be doing this. But as a homeowner, if I'm going to uh, set up the ability for someone to come in and rent some rooms, how do my neighbors know that I'm trying to do that? I would say, do the, I would even piggyback, should they know you're trying or know that you've done it? Because it's really, in my opinion, it's not yeah. my neighbor's business what I do with my property as long as I don't break the law. So you know, I would say, don't tell me what I can't do, but I would guess, do we need to let them know that you're trying to do it or after you've done it? Well, and, and that's my point is exactly what you brought up. So we're grandfathering in people maybe or maybe okay. don't know. But if someone then tries to do this, this is, you guys, this is going to take off. If it hasn't already and we just don't know it, this is going to take off. The timing of this is key. We need to get this locked in quick. I'm just telling you. So if, if, if someone is going to take off on this in the next six weeks, next to me, in Lake Stevens, how am I made aware? If they're going to the city to follow all of the rules that we're going to put into place, how am I made aware? So under today's code, just like any other land use application, they actually have to provide a written notice to 300 foot radius, goes in the newspaper, et cetera. Planning Commission had talked about wanting more streamlined regulations and under the draft code, it is a responsibility of the owner of the property when they want to commence using the property as a short-term rental, they have to provide written notification during the review process to their adjacent neighbors. So that's the, the two scenarios. Meaning either side, all four sides. Yeah. 
Is it as so a curl flag or by like sidewalk and road? It's it, there's not that deal of uh, not that clarity in the code, but we can provide exactly what we mean and what the commission would would like to see. Because I just referenced back when we did like the the cannabis stuff. It was you know whether it was the growth flies or whether it was by yep. the the path. And I think we should decide whether it's the path or you know if you have a shared backyard, it might not mean three hundred feet though to walk all the way around. You know, the sidewalk might take you a lot longer than that, but they might have a shared backyard still. But there's no direct path to that backyard. So. Well, and, and if you have cars and 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 boat trailers pulling into your parking your your <laughs> uh, neighborhood, um, you're gonna you're gonna want to know. You know, you're you're gonna want to know that this is something that might be a potential and be able to speak up to protect your neighborhood. Yeah, and just to clarify, that 300 feet is is the current process um, because as of now, tourist homes or short-term <laughs> rentals require an administrative conditional use permit, which is a type two land use application. And that's why that's required. This would um, streamline the regulations to make uh, short-term rentals outright permitted uses subject to these supplementary <laughs> use regulations. The, the draft language in subsection B7 is for, or, sorry, B8 is for adjoining property owners. Um, so we would like to get your feedback. Do you think adjoining is enough? Do we need to extend that? Should there be a radius you know, of 200 feet, 300 feet like there is now? It's basically as the crow flies, you draw a little radius around your property. Um, and so any feedback on what you think is the adequate amount of distance for people to be notified of tourist homes, we're willing to incorporate that those thoughts into revised language i would definitely suggest that there's a 300 uh, foot you know circle around the house that all those folks that are within that 300 gets notified okay um that sounds good to me too um so with these changes and these uh, questions to staff, is that enough to? Hey, hey Chair Welch, um, Connor Davis had a, a comment. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't looking at you. Sorry, Connor, go ahead. Yeah, just given the, uh, the pretty varied size of properties uh, in Lake Stevens, to maybe look, you know, I know 300 feet is dependent on where the, the, the rental is, 300 feet may be fully encompassed within somebody's property. Um, from their their door, like from their door. So, uh, but I could, you know, like the the uh, the naked guy uh, singing "Kumbaya" to the stars while the while the fire is going off. Uh, that, you know, if that's going on in a more rural area of the city, but it's right next to somebody with a larger property, you know, just to maybe think of of having it as as uh, as doors. So if it's maybe you know two you know, two doors in every direction. I don't know how that language could be incorporated. Um, I'm just thinking about the very varying sizes of, um, you know, throughout the city where I moved from. Um, and I've had experience on both sides of, of, of this as an owner and um, an occupant through Airbnb. And, uh, you know, we've, we've had good experiences and we've had really bad experiences on both sides. Uh, but we also moved from a city that was, uh, you know, it was, it was a uh, streets ran, ran north and south, avenues run east and west. Everybody has a 7,000 square foot lot and that was it. Uh, and so the, the code was a little bit easier to, uh, I'm, I'm sure, draw up versus an area like this where you have properties that are you know, a couple acres. Yeah. So just something to keep in mind. So yeah. Just to... like, so instead of doing like 300, maybe do like 500 feet. Just to make it a little bit bigger, so people are. Or, or can you go from the edge of the property lines each direction? Like, if your property line north is here, three hundred feet that way. Property line south, three hundred feet that direction. Same way with east and west. If you go three hundred from each edge of the property, then you're kind of compassing a pretty good wide away from that that particular residence. And that is how the current mapping does work. It's the the edge of the property, so it's a radius that goes out. Um, going to something like. 500 feet, I probably wouldn't recommend that because that's 
more stringent than our most intensive land uses. So there wouldn't necessarily be equity in doing that. But, um, you know, I, I would suggest staying with the 300 feet right now because that's consistent with a lot of the code. But we can work on some other language to make certain that if there are larger lots, that there's a uh, 300 feet, but no less than X number of lots. I believe we have some language like that in the code already for some other types of land use. So I would recommend just for parity that we um, don't create a process that will be unfamiliar to, to people both to implement and to um, go through an application process. I think we can, I think, uh, I don't want to speak to the whole commission office, but I think 300 is probably going to be fine, especially if it's, like I said, if it's already in the code, extra property lines, and I think you're getting that expansion that everybody's wanting. I think if I can agree, if I can, I think we all agree on that. So is there any other issues anybody has besides the, uh, like we said, the enforcement, make sure we got notification, um, how we're going to figure out the parking, especially with trailers. I don't know how we'll work that into the ordinance. I mean, if you have parking, yeah. Yes, Commissioner Cronin. Uh, I just I just have one. It's not related to the uh, parking, but it's um, just in, as far as I thought I'd address why I support just the owner occupied uh, currently as is. Um, and obviously, Commissioner Welch, you have way more experience than I do um, just in general in, in politics. But I feel like, you know, we do need to get to the code. You know, we do need to get some firm code that actually addresses it. Um, and just in general, in, in kind of politics, I feel like um to assess it each year makes more sense you know than really you know to kind of dip your toes in the water rather than cannonball in and having to rescind anything or realize you know that we uh maybe expanded it too much or opened it up too much um so for me i think you and i generally do agree a lot on you know private property rights and things like that um but for me this one just had so many trade-offs so i thought i'd kind of address that because i knew that was something that you were sure. um, talking about I understand completely, and I, and I know I'm in the minority on that thought, but um, I'm fine to uh, defer that owner occupies this fine with me. It's not a, it's not something I'm willing to uh, tilt at a windmill about. Put it that way, <laughs> um, you know, it's not that as big a deal to me. But um, you know, I, I have the same concerns about enforcement, though, like everybody else does. So I guess we have to make sure we have a good enforcement figured out, and how we're going to get people registered because we have so many homes already out there. How do we get, hopefully, get them in compliance? And um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at. So other than that, I think we're all, does the staff have enough direction here to come up with a final ordinance, hopefully that we can actually public hearing on and hopefully move on to the city council after that? I guess I'll go to Commissioner Needham or Planner Needham on that. Yeah, so we're good. So anybody else have any other concerns or anything that we want to address on this before we move forward? No, only that a, a, a trailer takes up the same amount of space as a vehicle. If I'm towing something behind my truck, that's mm -hmm. two parking spots. Yeah, that's, I guess that'd be the one thing we have to discuss or see how the staff comes up with a uh, solution for that to make sure that how you work that into the ordinance itself also. I guess we can see how that turns out. Um, and maybe a party bus. There you go. We'll park it at Russ's house. We'll be good. <laughs> All right, anybody else have any input? Hearing none, we're gonna move on to our next item. And that's going to be the public hearing. So, all right. So we're moving on to a public hearing on the city council on the ratification of the 2022 comprehensive plan docket. Um, what's going to happen for anybody that wants to take part in this hearing is that we're going to be we're going to open. I'm going to open the public hearing. Staff is going to give us the report. Then the commissioners are going to have a discussion between themselves and staff, then we will open up to the public comment portion. Then after that, I'll close the public comment portion. The commissioners will again have a discussion between themselves and staff, and then we will have a recommendation um, of some sort to move forward to the city council. 
And with that, I will now open the public hearing and turn it over to staff. And I believe that's going to be Planning Manager Levitan to take off. Thank you, Chair Welch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, just do a quick PowerPoint. <clears throat> All right, so yes, we're here tonight for uh, the Planning Commission's required public hearing to make a recommendation to Council on the 2022 Conference of Plan Docket. Just a little bit about the docketing process. So this is something that's allowed by the Growth Management Act. Uh, cities can make annual amendments to their comp plan, to their land use map, and then implementing ordinances such as their zoning map and other ordinances through uh, this annual docketing process. Um, the current comprehensive plan, the introduction outlines the procedures uh, for docketing that includes a deadline each year of January 31st for citizen initiated amendments where uh, members of the public are able to submit amendments that they would like to see. Um, typically, we brief the Planning Commission and the City Council on the proposals that have been received by that January 31st deadline. We did that back in February, um, I believe February 16th for the Planning Commission, February 22nd for the City Council. Um, staff then has spent the last few weeks evaluating uh, the citizen initiated amendments uh, for consistency with the procedures outlined in the comp plan. Um, and now the Planning Commission is holding the required public hearing to make their recommendation, which the City Council will consider at a separate public hearing next week. So just a little bit about the city initiated text amendments. Uh, these are pretty similar to past years with the exception of um, some potential amendments to the looking to make some potential amendments to the 20th Street Southeast Corridor sub area. And then we're also carrying over um, some amendments to the Shoreline Master Program that were docketed back in 2021, but which were not included um, in the actual comp plan up amendment for 2021. So other than that, um, to kind of our typical amendments that we make on an annual basis to the land use parks, uh, public services and utilities and capital facilities elements, those are basically aimed at keeping the documents current when it comes to demographic information, recent annexations, any regional planning efforts such as buildable lands and um, the growth targets that were just adopted by the County Council. Those will all be items that will be incorporated into the document and then just standard administrative updates. Uh, what we have seen this year is we've gotten um, application citizen initiated proposals. We haven't for the last couple of years. Um, so this will be something new to some of the commissioners. Uh, we had originally received three docket applications. Uh, one of those was withdrawn. Um, so now we have two active docket applications. Uh, they're both located in the Eastern portion of the 20th Street corridor. Um, so one is down here on 97th Drive Southeast, that's accessed from South Lake Stevens. Um, and then the other one is in the eastern, very eastern portion of the sub area, uh, just east of Lake, South Lake Stevens um, Road um, on the south side, it includes two parcels. So I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail on those. Um, so proposal M1 um, is for uh, the two properties that are located on 20th Street Southeast, we received a land use, uh, a proposal from an applicant to uh, change the current land use designation, which is high density residential or HDR to change that to commercial along with a concurrent rezone um, from RA12 to the commercial district, which are the, which is one of the implementing um, zoning uh, designations for that land use designation. Uh, the Applicants materials are included in exhibit A to it, attachment one. They outline the applicant's desire to open a brewery at that location. Um, and staff has reviewed this. It, um, it is as requested from the Planning Commission provided a little bit more detail on the specific requests. It was also discussed with the City Council on February 22nd um, and they were generally supportive of rezoning um, and changing the land use designation of that portion of 20th Street, or at least considering it as part of the docket. Um, so the staff is recommending um, that it be included in the 2022 docket. Um, I'll get into it a little bit more, but the city is also proposing kind of a, a city initiated 
uh, map amendment that doesn't have specific boundaries or specific changes at this point, but um, based on some direction that we received from the Planning Commission and City Council is going to take a more holistic approach to reviewing land use designations and zoning designations within the eastern portion of the sub area. So that's proposal M3. So that this individual proposal M1 is included within that, but we are recommending that it be docketed separately so that the specific proposal um, to change it to commercial and commercial district be considered on an individual basis. Uh, the second uh, citizen initiated proposal we received was to change the land use um, designation of one property, one undeveloped parcel that's located on 97th Drive Southeast. So this is SR9, this is 20th Street, this is South Lake Stevens, and this is 97th Drive Southeast. So this is a residential neighborhood, um, pretty much fully developed with the exception of this one parcel um, that's undeveloped. It had its land use designation changed from commercial district to, uh, sorry, from I just the, I noted the zoning, but the land use designation was changed as well as part of the 2019 docket. Um, basically, there was a desire to expand commercial opportunities within the sub area. So, um, the boundaries of the commercial land use designation and commercial district shifted a little bit east into previous residential areas. Um, the applicant's materials are included in Exhibit B to Attachment 1. Um, their request is based on the desire to be able to develop this parcel um, because they are now considered non-conforming and they don't have an existing house on the property. They cannot develop it with a single family residential use that is not a permissible use. Um, but we've kind of reviewed this with the Planning Commission, uh, reviewed it with the City Council on February 22nd, the, um, and they are making a site-specific uh, land use designation change and rezone request that would kind of put it, it wouldn't be consistent with the immediately adjacent properties. Um, and so we are not recommending that it be included on the 2020 to 2022 docket, but we are recommending that 97th Drive Southeast be analyzed as part of docket proposal M3, which will look at land use and zoning and potential changes within the greater sub area. So there still would be an opportunity for there to be some changes made um, in this area as part of the 2022 docket, but it would be looked at um, kind of a, uh, at a larger scale. So that aforementioned uh, proposal M3, um, it's basically a proposal to docket a review of existing sub area land uses and zoning east of SR9. Um, we've talked about it a little bit as a kind of a check-in on land uses um, after the, the, uh, the sub area plan now has been, is about 10 years old since it was adopted. So this is an opportunity to check in on land use and market trends to look at potential changes that might need to be made. Um, you know, some of the areas that staff is preliminary identified within kind of the hatch marks are especially along down here on 97th to include uh, proposal M2 um, along 99th, um, potentially some opportunities for additional commercial along 20th Street, as well as some additional um, potential either high density or, or other kind of missing middle options further north on 99th. Um, and then some potential additional commercial uses on the south side of 20th. So these aren't set in stone as far as what staff is proposing. We're basically proposing it be docketed as an analysis and potential of potential amendments that could be made uh, to the sub area. And so that goes along with the um, text amendment T7, uh, I think it was T6 or T7, the sub area plan one. So that proposed map amendment M3 goes along with the text and potential text amendments to the sub area plan. So um, as far as staff's findings and recommendation, um, we believe that the proposals T1 through T7, M1 and M3 all meet the criteria to be included in the 2022 comp plan docket. Um, we are recommending against the inclusion of proposal M2, but recommending that it be reviewed as part of M3 at uh, kind of that more 30,000 foot level. And so staff is recommending that commission forward a recommendation to city council to ratify as proposed or with any requested amendments. Um, and with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. 
Okay, thank you so much. Um, Okay. And I can stop the screen share. Or I can leave it up if people want to look at the at the maps. Um, if you want to pull up the maps, that'd be fine. Um, I think the question I'm going to have real quick on the M2. So you guys are staff is recommending not moving that one into the docket for this year because they're wanting to change that to something more than what's already there, i.e., in that neighborhood, right? Uh, no, so our recommendation as far as not including it is because it is a site-specific land use change and site-specific rezone. Um, okay. The other properties are legal non-conforming because they have existing uses. The city council had some preliminary feedback that, especially with Costco going in and you know the, the city council only having changed the land use designation about two or three years ago, um, that we you know take a wider view of this as opposed to docketing, you know, an individual essentially rezone. Okay. Thank you. And then M3 or M M1, excuse me. That's just for that one location and your recommendation is for it to be added, it'll stay separate from the M3. Yeah, so it's within the boundaries of M3, but we would docket it as that specific request to go to commercial, um, whereas um, M2, we're not proposing that it be docketed individually, but that the area be included. It could be that it goes back to residential based on feedback from the planning commission, some of the analysis that we do of buildable lands data. So there still is the opportunity for it to be um, revert to residential in nature, but we would want to go through that docketing process to look at the sub area as a whole, as opposed to just that one parcel, where, whereas we think we have enough direction on proposal M1 to support it be docketed individually. All right, thank you so much. Any other commissioners have any questions of staff before we move it to the public? I'll withhold my questions. Thank you. All right, hearing nothing, we're gonna open the public comment portion of the public hearing. At this time, anyone in the public has a, has a, we'll give them about three minutes to discuss anything regarding this 22, 2022 planning docket. So if anybody has any questions or any comments, I mean, any comments, excuse me, for the record, now would be the time. So if you have something to say something, your name or something, Hey, Todd. Hey, Brian. How are you? Good. Do you wish to make a comment on this? I do wish to make a comment. Thank you for giving me a few minutes. I just want to thank everybody who's helped us kind of get to this point and be able to have the opportunity. We're a homegrown business. We want to stay homegrown. Uh, we've outgrown where we are right now. We're busting at the seams. So we want a place for families to come and gather, uh, kind of build on our success, and then add you know, to our growth plan for our business. Uh, to get into more retail locations. Right now, we're really hampered by the lack of space we have to brew beer. Uh, so we think this would be a great draw for the city. Um, a lot of our customers are very excited about it. We've talked to most of the neighbors around the property. They're, they're enthusiastic about having it. Uh, and we think it'll be a great fit for that side of the lake and that side of the neighborhood. So I really appreciate everybody's time up front uh, and look forward to moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. And, this, and you were testified for M1 to go on the docket, right? Yes, sir. All right, just want to make sure for the record. Yeah, Thank you so much. Pro, forgot my protocol, sorry about Thank that. <laughs> Thank you so much. You bet. Anyone else wish to testify tonight? Anyone else? Hearing nothing, I'm going to close the public comment portion of the public hearing and go back to the commissioners. And any more comments or questions of staff or uh, how we want to proceed? Uh, Commissioner Cronin, sorry. Yeah, so just so I'm understanding it correctly. So for M3, uh, the request is just to do research on that sub area plan. No zoning is actually being changed for it. Am I understanding that correctly? So we don't have specific land use or zoning changes that are proposed as part of it. It's basically authorizing us to do essentially a check-in and analysis that may involve changes to land use designations. They would all need to go through the, the relevant criteria for rezones and for land use code um, 
sorry, land use, uh, comp plant land use text amendments. Um, so it's basically establishing, docketing a review of the sub area, both for the map and for uh, any text, um, you know, to that without having any specific changes involved. David, would that mean essentially it's not doing a full sub area plan, but kind of like changes to that sub area could occur through this, but it's not going to be as in depth as if we were to do a whole entire sub area plan and docket for that. Correct. Yeah, there's an existing sub area plan. This is basically a review and a check in and some potential kind of amendments to the sub area plan. And so it needs to be docketed for us to consider that as as part of the 2022 comp plan uh, amendments. Thank you. Commissioner Jennifer Davis. Um, I, I'm really in favor of M3 being added to the docket um, because it one of the very first projects I worked on as a commissioner 10 years ago or 11 years ago was the sub area plan and the world's changed about five times since we did that sub area plan. So I think it's high time that we do a survey, look at it and, and kind of make adjustments as needed. So I'm in favor of that for sure. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Huxford. If I may, um, M1. And I appreciate Mr. McManus being on the um, uh, call tonight. It's always helpful when we get comment from uh, people that this affects. Um, my concern are the people that are not on the phone and um, the wetland that this will roll up next to and the idea that we have been residential, 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 and now we're gonna pull back residential to make commercial a piece of property that perhaps we could go um, and, and satisfy some of our res residential requirements on. I am not anti-brewery. Note that here. I am simply saying that, um, you know, is this the right place for this to be lining up next to residential housing, giving up a corner that could be residential housing that's already being developed up and, and supplying housing for the community. The wetland was also a big deal. When that house was originally brought down on the corner to make that um, um, uh, um, intersection bigger, I lived here, I saw that happen, and I know that was a big deal to make sure that that was gonna be environmentally sound. So I simply, I, I'm not for or against, I'm just wanting to offer my opinion that to say residential co to commercial right there, um, if I live next door to that, I would question that. The M2, which we have um, swept under the, the carpet um, in the last comments, um, I, I would not do that. I took that vote. I'm the one that landlocked that, uh, one of the people that landlocked that property uh, back in what, 14, 16 ish. And I've always regretted that vote. If these people have a piece of property that they can build on and it is compliant with or uh, consistent with the rest of the um, neighborhood in that area, I think that they should be able to do that. And I would not um, put that into an M3. I would allow them to do so. So the latent property, I would give my approval on personally. Thank you. Um, I'll, a little bit of clarification. But you're, are you fine with M1 going on the docket and us getting all the facts for it and I'm, making that determination? I'm, that I'm fine with that. I would hope that this is, um, and like I say, I'm not anti, I'm hoping that this is going to be in the broader scope of where we want 20th to go. And to Jennifer Davis's comment, we've spent a lot of time on 20th. And if we're going to take 20th from one to the other, as certainly a corner of 20th from one to the other, I would just simply want it to be fleshed out in the light of day and have those communities that just moved in around that be aware that this is something that's being considered. Thank you. Any other commissioners? Commissioner Cronin. You're muted. I'm sorry. Of <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I'm echoing a lot of the other commissioners. I think uh, for me personally, I mean, uh, for M1, I think it's practical and it makes sense there. Um, I also think the city has a problem with there is no commercial land. Um, so if it is an opportunity, you know, I do agree with Commissioner Huxford point And, you know, I try to 
think about if I own the land next door and all that stuff too. Um, but I'm in support of M1. And, and like I said, I think, uh, you know, the city needs, you know, properties like that if the opportunity is there. Um, and then secondly, uh, as far as M3, um, I agree with Commissioner Davis, um, just as far as with how much time you, everybody spent on it. Um, you know, as zoning changes, the city grows. I think it's important to really, you know, any resources that can be put into, you know, efficient planning for that area, um, I'm in full support of. So I, su I support both of them going to the doctor. All right. All right. So I guess how we're going to, we need to send a recommendation to the planning commission or the city council. So I'm going to do, I would like to do this hopefully if staff is all right in a, in a couple, a couple blocks, if that's all right. And see if, since we have the, the city initiated text amendments, um, I guess I would like to make a motion first to move those to the docket as presented by the staff. That would be my motion. And I'm looking for a second if anybody wants one. With comment? On the, on the citizen, uh, not me, on the city initiated ones, the T1 the T through seven. Oh, T1 through seven. Yeah, because I know there's a little bit there's a little more discussion, I think, on the citizen one than there is on the city one. So I'm just splitting up the motion in more than one. I'm I think I'm overcomplicating it, but I just want to make sure that the city initiated ones would seem to be more of kind of just generic, get on the docket for sure right now. That we're fine with putting them on our docket. The T1 through T7. I would second that. So a motion a second to approve the city initiated text amendments to the docket. Any other discussion on the city initiated ones? Hearing none, can I get a vote? Aye. 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 Any votes no? Any abstains? All right. So we've got that all the city initiated text amendments are moved to the 2022 docket or recommended to the city council. Now on the citizen initiated ones, um, we have the staff is recommending M1 and M3 be moved to the docket and not M2. Is there anyone that wishes to make a change to that recommendation before we make, anybody makes a motion? I would ask that um, M2 be kept separate. Okay, so you, you would like M2 to be on the docket? Correct. Because right now staff is recommending no. So you'd like M1, M2, and M3 to all three be on the docket? Yes. Okay. So that is a motion. Is there a second? For all three to be on the docket. Not getting a second. Commissioner Cronin. I think this is, uh, it may be over my head from a, uh, I'm, let's just say I'm happy you're running this meeting and not, not me last year. <laughs> that would have been really tripping. Um, but I don't think I disagree with what Commissioner Huxford says, but as far as I understand it, if we moved it into number three, we would still research it all and it would still be kind of part of the plan. So I'm not necessarily disagreeing with Commissioner Huxford, but um, is our, our, I guess is what we're voting on different? Yeah. No, it, it, and it's okay to disagree with Commissioner Huxford. I mean, it's all <laughs> it's all good. I just want, um, it, it appears that this one lot is something that we could, I don't wanna say fast track, but something that could be handled relatively quickly. This is this is the right thing to do for that community for that for that landowner. It satisfies a, a a residential need that our community desperately needs. Whatever I don't know, and to lump it in with other parcels, bigger parcels, to me seems um, problematic. But I, I'm not saying that that you know this is the only way. And I'll go out and throw a tantrum if I don't get it on there separately. But why not just handle this? So. If we put it on the docket as two, or if we absorb it into three, I would certainly hope that the city would communicate with that family and do things right, because that seems like a simple fix to me. You know, I, I agree in that fact is I, if I understand M2 correctly, 
it's just that one lot. I, you know, I probably that whole street needs to go back to what it was and not be commercial. But can we approve? Can we, is M2 only that one lot or can it be that whole little street there? Because the whole street right now, you'd make one lot in the middle of the street residential, but everybody around them is now commercial, technically. No, that's correct. So that for M2, it's just for that single lot. And that definitely factored into why we are not recommending inclusion in the docket. Um, as has been noted, we are, you know, as part of M3, we would look at, at that. We would look and we would need to kind of look at it on a, on a, on a, through a wider lens as far as what are our population target needs, what are our employment target needs, how can we accommodate both our population and job growth over the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, and so as of now, you know, through the current land use and zoning, the vision for that area is for it ultimately to be commercial. So there are some problems with allowing them to develop it with a brand new single family home, um, which would basically create a whole lot of improved value that, on that property and probably hinder redevelopment of that area with commercial development. Um, what we are proposing through M3 is for us to look, does it make sense for that area to remain commercial? It's been 10 years. Um, well, it's only been three years since it received it, but um, there hasn't really been a whole lot of push within that. So we want to be able to look at what the employment needs and what the population needs are. And we thought that it was better to do it as part of that wider kind of sub area wide analysis, as opposed to creating a situation where you are docketing a proposal that doesn't really meet the rezone criteria, especially because it creates just kind of an island of one that's surrounded by all of these other land use designations of commercial. I would also know that, yeah, if there were concerns about this and if, if commissioners did feel strongly about property rights, I mean, there are other ways, you know, there are potential changes to the non-conforming code or something like that. I think it would be hard to, um, you know, create specific language that address this, but it doesn't necessarily need to be through the through the comp plan docketing process. Okay. Okay. I I, I see where both sides are on this because I, I agree with uh, Commissioner Huxford that you know I think that property needs to. I think that whole street needs to go back to probably residential. I don't see somebody buying all those houses and then making it all commercial. I don't, that's pretty implausible. But they're all individually owned single family homes. I just don't see that going that direction. Um, I would ask them, what, what would be the difference probably in time frame between an overall like M3, how M3 plans on being compared to M2? like getting approval because I see that now somebody owns a lot that they can't use right now. How long is it going to take them for possibly a decision being made for them to use that lot? So um, I'll, I'll take that one. So the, the docket, it sets the all comp plan amendments for the year. So all of these changes would happen simultaneously. So we would study it over the next several months and then all of our decisions and recommendations are going to be based on the uh, the effect of all of these, and then going through the actual criteria to recommend that change. And you know that's why our initial recommendation is to not docket it because it really doesn't meet all of the the specific criteria to to move it forward. And that's why we though did say if the commission and the council wants to take a broader look at the sub area as we had three applicants come to us this year one obviously dropped out this does give us an opportunity to look at some of those and really look at them through the lens of our updated growth targets and and buildable lands and that would really uh factor into some of the the future recommendations that we we make okay thank you all right so I know I've overcomplicated this a little bit and I apologize. So, Commissioner Huxford, do you still have your motion on the table? Um, I do. Without support, I'll withdraw my motion. Is there any second for Commissioner Holt or Commissioner Huxford, excuse me? Hearing none, that motion is denied and we will move on to another motion. 
So I'll institute that we approve M1 and M3 to be added to the docket as requested by staff. Second. We got a second with a mo motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I'll oppose. Any abstain? Then we have a six to one on that one. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it. I'm sorry I overcomplicated that. But uh, I figured there was going to be no problem with the city request, but I knew we had a little bit going on with the citizen one, and I wanted to get that figured out completely and get it. I overcomplicated something I thought would be simple, but <laughs> I appreciate I appreciate everyone's uh, patience with me. So with that, I will close the uh, public hearing and we'll move on to commissioner's reports. And I will start with myself tonight and first and say that uh, we are joined by Commissioner Peter Shagan, our council liaison. I did not mention that at the beginning of the meeting. So I want to go ahead and call out that he was at the meeting. And also I had a brief discussion with uh, uh, Director Wright today, and it looks like we're looking to hopefully go to a hybrid starting in our April meeting if, if staff and tech can keep up, can uh, get figured out correctly. So there's a chance we will be able to park to meet in person in April or in a hybrid form. So we'll, so I guess going with it closer. So for commissioners to possibly plan to meet in person. So, you know, whatever that takes for you to do, whether it be a haircut or something, not wearing sweatpants at the meeting, that's up to you. So hopefully we'll be able to have a meeting uh, in person. It would be good to see everybody for the first time. And I don't think I've done a live planning commission meeting yet, <laughs> put it that way. So hopefully that is. Other than that, I have nothing else to report. And so I will go around and uh, the names I see and I'll see uh, Commissioner Holt. Um, yeah, so I just got reelected for another three years on the Snohomish County Tomorrow Steering Committee as a citizen rep. So this is, I think you're 26. I was going to say no, but then decided to say yes again. So anyways, that was great. That was great news. Commissioner Dewar. Uh, you know, Todd, I think you and I were sworn in at the same time and I still haven't met you in person. <laughs> Only one got sworn in. We were there because yeah. I had the picture, but that's yeah. it. <laughs> but no, my only piece is, uh, you know, welcome to Connor Davis. Uh, we're thrilled to have you on board and look forward to working with you, hopefully in person soon. Thank you. Commissioner Cronin. Uh, welcome, Commissioner Davis and no report. Right. Commissioner Huxford. I was going to ask about the annexation that was discussed in the city council meeting last week. Um, uh, I don't need to blager the point tonight because I've been speaking a lot, but if perhaps we could be updated on um, that conversation, I'd be appreciative at some point. Commissioner Jennifer Davis. Um, welcome to Commissioner Connor Davis again. Um, and then I, I have no report, but I did have a question. Um, sometimes in years past, we've mirrored the our meetings in April to the school district's um, spring break schedule. And I was curious if we are going to do that this year and um, use our alternate meeting or whether we're meeting in our typical meeting time. When is the school break? All my kids are graduated, so I don't keep up with that anymore. <laughs> uh, it's the first week. Yeah. It's the first week. Would anybody have a, well, I guess we can get that out of the way. Does anybody have a problem or staff have a problem with meeting, making the alternate meeting our only meeting of April? But that's what you're asking, right? To have that week off in case. All right. Anybody have any issues? All right. Seeing none, I think I'm just, we can. I'm just looking at my calendar here. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Might as well do it too. Uh, so we're saying the week of the 20th. I'm pulling up my calendar too as you speak. Oh, you're yes. ready to say the, tw the 20th. Yeah, that looks looks good to me. Yeah, I'm, I have no issues. So I think we're all good. So is everybody good with the 20th being our meeting for April? 
Great. So that uh, thank you, Commissioner Davis, for uh, bringing that to our attention. Do you have anything else to report? Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Connor Davis. I just uh, once again appreciate the the kind welcome, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing y'all in person next month. Great. Um, with that, um, I'm going to turn over to Director Wright. Okay. Yeah, it will be nice to to see everyone. Um, in fact, yesterday is the first time I met uh, Connor, and I've been working with him. He, he failed to mention he also had served on the park board for the last year and a half. So this was uh, yesterday was the first time I met him in person. So it'll be good to, to see the rest of you as well. Um, as to the question on the annexation, there was a citizen initiated annexation that was brought to the city for three parcels near the south end of the southeast end of the city. They had a 10% application and the owners of those properties actually control 100% of the annexation area, but it starts with a 10% annexation through that process. And now they're moving forward to get their 60%. And again, there are the single property owners amongst those three properties. So that will be moving back to, to council when we receive that 60% petition and then on to the boundary review board. And with that, I don't have any other um, scheduled comments for the commission tonight, but I'm happy to answer any questions that the, the commission may have. Do commissioner have any questions of the director before we adjourn the meeting? Hearing none, um, I guess that's done with that. And um, does anybody have anything else for the good of the Group before we meet again in the 20th. Hearing nothing, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? So move. Second. I got a motion and a second to adjourn the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, hopefully, no one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that'll be it. And uh, thank you all for attending. And uh, everybody have a great day. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks, John.